Hey, what's going on guys? It's the Dean List and today I'm going to be bringing you my Wraith building guide. Now, over the past like week and a half, I've tried out a lot of different builds running from crit to just building them like full damage with like ability pin and like hydroverser to the build that I have and that I'm going to show you today, which features stinger boost, thick blood, stasis gem, and a whole bunch of, I guess, attack speed and a ward. So pretty much what I've learned just from playing Wraith is one, he's a very high skill cap hero. I wouldn't suggest playing him at all, or you're not gonna like playing him if you have potato aim. So what I mean by that, like if you can't, if you're not normally good playing carry, so playing a carry like Sparrow, not Revenant, like someone like Sparrow or like a Murdoch, then you're not gonna be able to play Wraith. Because he only has one ability that does damage, and that's his knock knock ability. And that's also a skill shot that if you don't have good aim, you're not gonna be able to land. I'd almost compare him to, let's say you're playing like Halo. It's almost like playing a hero in Halo, where like you have to like snipe. You have to be able to do those kind of like fast twitch motions. So if you're not able to do that well, then I actually, I wouldn't suggest playing Wraith at all. Cause he's gotten a really bad rep, I'd, I'd say, over the past couple weeks. From a lot of people just saying that like he's useless, he's like another Polari, he doesn't really add anything to teams, and I completely disagree with that. I think he's a really good mid. I don't necessarily think you should play him as support just because he needs to be last hitting, he needs to be building up a lot of damage to be effective, and if he's playing support, he really can't do that. I, I had to play him support one game, and I had I had 16 kills, like I you not, I had 16 kills, but my team hated me because I was last hitting, and not that I was kill stealing, but I wasn't letting my carry get the kill because that's not what his kit is really conducive for. His kit is conducive for securing kills with his snipe, and then if you're able to land your autos, you can do a lot of damage in a quick amount of time. So with that being said, I want to get into the actual build. So for my prime card, I have the Archmagus, which is going to give you 30 extra power. For consumables, I have one cast token, one health potion, one strike token, one healer token, and Empyrean Mask. Empyrean Mask is a great card. It's a really, really good card. So once I actually go with this card before I go back and get ward. So typically what I'll do is as soon as I have four CXP to spend, I'll go back and I'll grab Empyrean Mask. This gives you a really huge power spike uh, in comparison to other mid laners. So if you're going up against like a Gideon or a Fey, something like that, uh, someone that's not of the order affinity, like Gadget and Bellica obviously would be able to do this. But you apply your Imperial Mass, it's going to give you 24 extra power. It also gives you some mana regen and it gives you basic and ability armor as well. You can toggle between the abilities, so it's really good. It's a really good card. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go through my equipment. So I have my Dummy Ward here, my Magus Ward. Then I have my Guardian's Ward. I have three Whirling Wands, so two early game ones and then one for the final build. I have Thick Blood, I have Teleblink, Stinger Boost, Stasis Gym, Tainted Magic, Hydroverser, and Purity Center. So what the normal like final build is gonna look like typically is gonna be Hydroverser here, then you have your Stasis Gym, you have Stinger Boost, you have Thick Blood, you have your Whirling Wand, and then finally you have your Ward. So, the other cards that I have in here are really just utility cards. So if you ever felt the need, like you wanted to go with, with Teleblink over Stasis Gym, then you could do that. So you would apply this um, Teleblink here. Obviously, like since I normally go with Stasis Gym over Teleblink, I almost never use Teleblink. It doesn't um, match up, so like you'd be down six points. But when if you actually decide that you like Teleblink over Stasis Gym, then you could end up going with applying either add-ons here to the stinger boost or potentially even using like something like tainted magic but essentially the reason i chose a lot of these cards is i'll start with thick blood thick blood is a really good counter card for the current meta right now which is phase your adc's obviously chimera and rampage that's a really good counter card for that it's going to give you a 40 percent blight once you land an ability on whoever that ability is landed on so if you land that ability on like a rampage while it's ulting that's a 40 percent blight which is gonna affect his health regen. Same thing that goes with phase, it affects cards like quenching as well. So it's a really it's a really good card, especially for the meta that we're in currently. Now Stinger Boost. Stinger Boost is the next card that I think is like pretty much the staple, the linchpin of this deck. So with Stinger Boost, 
the build order is I'll usually start off with, like I said, the Empyrean Mask. So I'll start off with a Strike Token and a Healer Token. And then like once I get four points, I'll go back and I'll get Empyrean Mask. And then once I back again, I'll get Wards, but I won't fill it out because that's my 12 point card. So the next card that I typically go with after that is going to be Stinger Boost. Now Stinger Boost is a really important card because it's going to give you 50 extra damage on your basic attacks after you land an ability, plus an extra 20% um, based on the amount of power that you have. So it's a really good early game card because you're going to get an extra 50 damage on all of your basic attacks. And with Wraith, one of the big things that I like to do is frame cancel. So what I'll do is I'll typically, I'll basic attack, I'll use this R1 as knock knock ability to frame cancel, and then I'll do another basic attack. So early game, since I haven't equipped my speed cards yet, having the ability to frame cancel with stinger boost and get that extra damage is critical. And it's what allows me to do a lot of damage very quickly in comparison to other casters, like a Bellica or like a Gideon. Like those casters, they need to land their abilities. But with Wraith, because of stinger boost, you're able to do a lot of damage really quickly with his basic attacks. Now, depending on how the game is going, I'll either go the Whirling Wands so I have these two um, six point whirling wands that I'll typically upgrade. But if I see that like there's a rampage or there's a phase and like they're being, it's really tough for us, for my team to deal with them, that's when I'll go Thick Blood. So just to recap, you'll have your Empyrean Mask, you'll have your Stinger Boost, you'll have your Ward, and then either you're gonna go through your whirling wands or you're gonna go with Thick Blood. If you go with Thick Blood, typically, then I'll go with the Whirling Wand, and then the next card that I'll equip after that is going to be your Hydroverser. So Hydroverser is a card that you want to equip roughly around, I'd say, level like 9 or 10. When you're level 10, you're going to have like roughly 1,000 mana, so that's a really good value for this card because it gives you 7% of your current mana. And with Wraith, it's a really good card on him as opposed to other casters, let's say like a Bellica or even a Howie for instance because you're not really going to be using that much mana like his abilities don't take that much mana at all his knock knock ability which is what is the most mana intensive move that he has that that costs 125 mana I think when it's fully maxed out but it refunds mana whenever you last hit a minion or you get a kill on a person on an enemy hero so with that you're really not going to be low on mana at any point in the match so you can definitely run Hydroverse on him. It's a really good card with him. And it's going to give you that extra damage. So like once you equip this card, typically around mid-game, you're hitting for around anywhere between like 350 and 400 mid-game on your snipes, which is like ridiculous. Like in comparison to other abilities, especially because it's on that low cooldown. Now, Stasis Gym is a card that I like to apply or equip pretty much, I'd say... I guess like 36 card points, 39 card points, somewhere like in that mix. Usually like if I see that the other team has like a Chimera or like a Severog or Grux, I count this like heroes that have a lot of burst damage or like a Crunch even. I'll equip Stasis Gem a little bit earlier, but I like to hold off on that card um, just because if you're equipping Stasis Gem earlier, one, it's taking up a spot of something like potentially like Hydroverse or Stinger Boost, and then two, you're going to be missing a lot of damage there. So that's the reason I like to hold off on it until around like 36 to 39 card points. But that's usually um, the next card that I like to apply. So just to recap, I know because I'm kind of going out of order here. You're going to want to go with your health potion or your strike token and your healer token to start off with. Then you're going to go with Imperial Mask. Then you're going to go with your Guardian's Ward. Then after that, you're going to want to go with your Stinger Boost. Then you want to get into your Whirling Wands here. So this Whirling Wand and that Whirling Wand. Then you're going to want to go into, like I said, either Thick Blood if they have like a phase, like a Rampage that's going pretty crazy. Or you're going to want to go into Hydroverser. When you pick up Hydroverser, you're going to want to discard your Empyrean Mask. Depending on how the game is going, like if you, don't, if you can fill out your Hydroverser without discarding Empyrean Mask, then by all means don't do it. But typically, like in order for me to equip my Hydroverser uh, timing point that I want to in the game, I usually have to get rid of my Empyrean Mask. Once you equip that, you're going to want to go with your Stasis Gem. And then finally, you're going to start upgrading your last Whirling Wand here, so your bigger one, and your Guardian's Ward, and then finally your Thick Blood. 
Now I have Tainted Magic in here and I have it as the same uh, cost as a Thick Plug. So theoretically, you could go with Tainted Magic as well if they don't have a phase, if they don't have a Rampage, if they don't have a Chimera. If you feel like the Tainted Magic is gonna do more damage and it's gonna give you more value in the game. So since you're with Tainted Magic, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna be poking with Wraith's Knock Knock ability from distance. And then over time, that's gonna be dealing 8% damage to opposing enemy heroes, 8% of their current health, which is a pretty good value. So that allows you to rack up a lot of damage really quickly where you can, like before a team fight even starts, you can poke you know, the carry, you can poke the support, get them down really low, and then once your team actually engages, they're already at a disadvantage because you know, 30 to 40 to 50% of their health is already gone because you've used Kingdom Magic on them. So that's typically how I like to build Wraith. Now I also have a couple more utility cards in here. I have Purity Sensor, just in case like there is an Aurora. Now you would have to replace Hydroverser in there um, if you were gonna go with Purity Sensor, but that, that might be the sacrifice that you have to make if you have a phase as your support or you don't have someone else that can run Purity Sensor. So with that being said, I wanna get into some actual gameplay. Now this match was kinda toxic, I'm not gonna lie. In the draft, essentially like I had first pick and my teammates were just like, oh, like please, you know, please select a different hero, like don't play Wraith. Wraith sucks, he's pretty much another Kalari, like all that kind of like <laughs> But you try not to let that like get you down like at all. Like you, like you know that you're good with the hero, then you know you just play that hero. Also, like the game isn't even in ranked mode yet, like there's no ranked. So I mean just like play whoever you want. At the same time though, like one of the things that like kind of like pisses me off and I like I do sometimes ask people to change heroes. It, like depending on like what the team matchup is. So like looking at like what the other team has and knowing that one hero is like hard countered by another hero. For instance, let's say if someone on your team has last pick and they're trying to pick Kalari, but on the other team there's a Wraith, there's a Wukong, there's like a whole bunch of like other like tanky heroes, like maybe a, a Severug or like a Greystone or something like that. It's like, probably shouldn't pick Kalari because you're not gonna have a good time just because of the team matchup. Not necessarily because you're a bad player or that Kalari is a bad hero. It's more so that they didn't pick any really squishy characters, so picking an assassin isn't a good idea. So it's a give and take, but at the beginning of the match, I was kind of, I was kind of blown just because like everyone was telling me to pick a new hero, but anyway, um, I want to get into the actual match. So, starting off, when I'm playing Wraith, I'll typically put down a ward next to the enemy team's their river buff, so the one on the left side. And then I'll back, so that's where my dummy ward goes. Usually, I'll start off with my knock knock ability. If I get into trouble while I'm setting down that ward, then that's when I'll go with my rewind. So, um, I have done that in the past. I didn't have to do that here, but I have done that in the past. Now to start off this match, they had put a ward down next to our Grux's green buff. So you'll see that the Bellica here is like really aggressive. And she's actually, she's trying to um, either take his green buff or try to secure early kill on him. So like as a mid laner, that's one of the things that like you need to pay attention to. Just being able to rotate to so like, I actually see around like the two minute mark, I see her leaving. I see that he hasn't started his green buff yet. So like she was just checking. I think she was just trying to see where he was like on the map. So like I continue to poke her, I use my rewind ability and get some damage in on her. I know she has the healer token to health potion, so like it, like poking her really isn't gonna matter that much. But at the same time, I want her to be not at full health when she goes, because I know she's gonna try and take this green buff from the Scrux. So once I see her go back in there, I follow her, get some more damage on her, and once she notices that I'm chasing behind her, that's when she leaves and she goes back to mid lane. So. Pretty much prevented the Grux from losing his green buff there. Um, if I hadn't done that, he definitely would have lost it. I was kind of mad here because my offlaner, he doesn't say anything when Phase leaves. Um, so she comes mid. Their Phase was very aggressive early game, pretty much all game, where she would um, challenge river buffs. She would be in mid pretty much the entire match, especially during the landing phase. So they're actually, because Grux is low, I guess he wasn't counting his minions well. He wasn't really able to challenge that river buff, so actually he was able to challenge it, he was, he was able to get it, but their phase was able to get the other one, she got the black buff. He's really low, so I'm coming in, I'm trying to help him out here. Their Belka, thank god she misses her, her stun here. Our phase, she had a really good rotation here, so she came over as well. I'm able to get some damage in on, on this phase, so I'm able to kill her with a few basics. 
and then our phase, I was able to use my rewind to grab the Belka and push her back. I keep missing my autos because I suck, but our phase is able to get a root on her. So I get some more basics in. She hits me with um, a seismic assault, but it doesn't matter. I'm able to kill with my snipe. So I got a double kill there. That was a really good rotation by our phase. So I was really happy there. But like I said, I wish that our, um, our left laner would have called that out because that happens a lot in this match, as you'll see. Now, one of the things that I like the most about Wraith is his ability to last it. So, if you're one of those people who have a hard time last hitting, Wraith may be the hero for you. From the beginning of the game, you can use this snipe to just secure those last hits, and it's really easy to. You don't really have to time anything because it does like the damage. So, once again, just to, to preface, I got a little bit salty here. So, left lane, I wish our Grux would have one just been a little bit better with ganking because they were pushing on our wukong like heavily so like i headed over but um they ended up falling back they retreated so i have a ward here i probably should have put down one of my uh the wards that are in my kit down by the river buff um i don't think i did but like yeah they started to rotate over so like he did call it out enemies missing left lane careful mid so I actually i see them here so i pushed back the phase but yeah it was there's still three people here I see several, he's in his jungle, we have a word over there, so we're cool here. But like at this point in time, like our teammates should have rotated. So Grux, he misses his pull, he backs up. I continue to farm, I'm just last hitting. Everyone goes back to what they're doing. But then yeah, so I have four people in mid. Um, so I try to get out here, I try to use my, my invisibility, but by that point in time, yeah, it's just too much damage. It's four people uh, jumping in on me, so it really wasn't much I could do there. But uh, this is this is one of the important reasons why like it's important to like as an ADC, like I know you want to get your farm, but like you can't just freeze the lane for 10 minutes because that just allows the other team to just rotate and just shit on your mid laner. So um, that's one of the things that I actually I typed out to our ADC and our support because like they were free. I know that they were going up against a Countess and like sometimes like especially if you like Countess get to level five and you haven't gotten your tower yet, it can be kind of hard because by that point in time where wave clear is really good. But at the same time, like you can't, you can't just let the opposing team get their tower around like five or six minutes and then like not push the one on our side in our safe lane. Cause that just puts a whole lot of pressure on your mid laner. Now at this point in time, because they got our mid tower like relatively early and like they, they probably were stacked. They were doing a really good job of grouping up and our, our Grux was struggling a little bit. They got Raptors. So they were a little bit ahead of us, like moving like further into like mid game. But I kind of just tried to do my best, just like salvaging like a pretty bad situation. So like whenever I saw an opportunity, um, I, I tried to rotate. So around the 14 minute mark, um, our team was doing a good job. We were pushing left side. Our face she lands a good stun on the enemy twin blast, so I'm able to land a snipe there. Now that was kind of a kill steal. I probably should let the Yin have that. But um, I was a little salty that they didn't get the tower, so I took it. So, yeah. Now, their Severog was very aggressive. He was in our jungle pretty much like once mid game rolled around. He was in our jungle all the time, so we had to keep it warded. At this one point in time, we had it warded very well, so we were able to see him when he was in the jungle. We were able to isolate the Severog key retreat, so we have the phase and we have the Twin Blast on one side, so we we're able to secure a kill in the phase. Then on the Severok, he tries to escape. He tries to re-engage first, then he tries to escape. Then we're able to double team him. Four of us are hitting him, and then I'm able to land another snipe. So I got a double kill there. Now with Wraith, um, if you're not on comms, it can be kind of hard, kind of tricky to time your back it up ability. Uh, what I typically like to do is, if I know that I'm gonna be able to secure the kill, then I'll just back them up. If I see that they're running away and I can bring them back into my team, I'll also do it as well. But like typically what I'll do is, since I'm, I have a really good aim, um, since I play ADC, I'll just use the back it up ability when I know that I'm gonna be able to secure the kill, um, first and foremost. If not, um, then I'll either like try to save it to where like the rest of my, I know that the rest of my team is gonna be there and they're gonna be able to like pay attention and see that I've backed that person up. But um, like in the beginning, I, what I've seen a lot of people who play Wraith, I've seen them do is they'll use their back it up ability and they'll pull their teammates, they'll pull the person away from where their teammates are, or um, they'll pull them out of an ability. So like, you don't want to do that. So that's probably one of the biggest um, skill caps with Wraith is learning when and when not to use your backup ability, especially when you're not on comms or you're in solo queue. 
Now here I'm setting mid lane and I see that uh, the other team they're trying to dive our tier two tower over here. So seeing that my team were focusing the Severog, so I'm able to get a snipe on him. He's still taking tower aggro, so I'm gonna focus the Severog since he's very low. So I'm landing my basic attacks and I'm able to kill him with a snipe. Uh, now at this point in time, our Yan, she goes down. So I'm gonna try to um, just clear these minions out, but I see that it's kind of a lost cause, so I end up going invisible here. Uh, we're gonna let that T2 uh, tower fall. We're also gonna lose the T2 tower, most likely on right side, since I saw that our Wukong was struggling with the Countess. Our Gruxy lands a pretty good pull here. Um, we're able to get some damage here on the phase. I pull her back in, but I'm not able to land a snipe here. I missed, um, so we're not able to get that kill there. Our Grux ends up dying in the process, so it's just me and Faze, so we're gonna have to end up letting this in hit go. At that point in time, like we didn't want, they had Prime, so like we didn't want them to be able to win the game there. If we had stayed there and we had gotten team wiped as well, me and the Faze, then that definitely would've been the end of the game. So uh, it was a good decision for us to just back off and to just regroup. Now the other team continued to be very aggressive, so once they all respawned, they came back and they started pushing our right side. So um, what I tried to do here is, I saw that the Countess was trying to escape, so I pulled her back into the tower. It was an easy snap for me, got that kill. And then our Grux, he's chasing the Severog. Um, he's making the Severog run in different directions. He's able to land a pull. And then I'm able to land another snipe, and then the, uh, the Grox is able to finish him off there. So I think his uh, cross chopper, double paint, or whatever, whatever the ability's called. They ended up flanking us, so the Twin Blast and the Phase were able to get a kill right there. So I ended up just backing here. I didn't see a point of trying to re engage that, especially since we didn't have our Phase. Now, since there's three right, uh, Gruxy decides that he wants to push mid, which wasn't a bad idea at all. Like me and the Wukong should be able to defend right side. I wish Yen would have went as well, because um, we definitely could have had an inhib at this point. Um, but we end up getting the tier two, which was good. Just getting rid of their jump pads at this point in the game was absolutely necessary, it was critical. Uh, I wish that, I know the Wukong was kind of low health, but I kind of wish he would have disengaged. If he would have engaged, we could have definitely prevented that Twin Blast from backing and he potentially could have gotten a kill on the Bellica and or the Phase. Now here, the enemy team, they're able to get a pick on our Grux and our again. So it's just me, Phase, and Wukong left. So at this point in time, Orb Prime had just respawned again, so they headed back to Orb. What I wanted to do was, I had, I had one of my little boards on there, probably like a minute earlier, but it had just expired. Uh, what I wanted to do was try to get a ward in there so that I could know when to snipe and potentially steal it. But essentially by that time they had already been able to get it so I wasn't able to potentially steal or prime there. At this point in time they were able to catch up to us so I tried to do the best I could here, try to focus the phase and get her out of the fight but um, she had a lot of healing, she had barrier of the will so I really couldn't do much there and this one just destroyed me to save me alive. Now our Yin and our Phase, they did a really good job. Once Yin respawned, she was able to actually get a kill on the Twin Blast in the Phase. So that was really good for us. That, that pretty much won us the game, or uh, kept us in the game rather. That wasn't the play that won us the game, but it, it kept us in the game because if their Twin Blast and their Phase would have stayed alive, they would have definitely been able to continue to push the core and they would have potentially won. Once I respawned, I was able to um, get back in the fight. Our, our Yin goes down to the Countess, but I'm able to help our Wukong out here, land a few basic attacks, and then I'm able to land a snipe here on the Countess to finish her off for my ninth kill. I try to rotate back to mid. I see that Grux is going down to the Severog. I get a couple shots here on him, but it's, it's literally not doing shit, so I just backed him up. I try to get out of there as quickly as possible. I don't want this mid and hip to fall down, so I start shooting the minions. Um, but at that point in time, the Severog, he lands a root on me, so I use Stasis Gem. Uh, but then he's able to just knock me up in the air and then I die. But I'm able to get the kill on him uh, when the tower, he takes the tower aggro there. So that was good. And then Wukong, he's there as well, so he's able to clean this up. He's able to clear the minions out. Then he's also able to secure this kill on FaZe. So we end up killing all of them. So we killed FaZe twice and we killed everyone else on their team as well. So once I respawned, the enemy team, they were still being very aggressive. 
I continue to push this lane out. I put down a ward. Um, I end up taking some damage here, so I use my invisibility, I use my ultimate to just escape from it. They put down a ward so they can see me. Um, they continue to push mid like, pretty hard. We have Grux, who we see he's flanking them from behind, so um, our Wukong is able to secure the kill on the Severog. Um, the Belka, she tries to blink in, but she ends up missing her seismic assault. So I was able to actually pull her back into the tower. So she had to use Stasis Gem, but that, that's not going to save her at all. So I was able to land a few basic attacks and I'm able to finish her off with my snipe. Um, we're also able to secure kills on the phase and the Twin Blast as well. So that's four of them down. So at this point in time in the game, we end up just pushing mid. We group up our Wukong. He actually backs here to defend our right side, but me, Yin, and the Grux in the phase as well. We're pushing mid against only a Countess, so we continue to push. We're able to grab um, this inhib here. I'm able to get some pokes on her um, so that she really can't defend this. So we're able to grab this inhib. I keep poking her as well. So um, once she, she tries to retreat here, she tries to go under her um, inhibitor on the right side, but phase is actually able to slow her. So I'm able to land a snipe there. I try to land a basic attack while I was just out of range. Once my snipe is back up, I try to snipe her again. She has like a nipple hair of health. So um, we actually, I wish the um, phase and Yin would have just hit the core, but instead they ended up trying to kill. They got, they secured the kill on the Countess. Um, so me and Grux, we continue to just hit the core and we're able to finish and we win the game here.